What's up everybody, Jesse Patella here with Redefine Effects and today we're gonna create these shockwaves from scratch with Embergen. This is a beginner friendly setup that you can do even if you're completely new to the software. So let's jump right into it. All right, so when you load up Embergen, we're gonna start with a blank scene. So just click on return to project. We can delete a lot of the stuff that's here just to clean it up. So let's just delete all of this and we don't need any of the export stuff. We don't need the gradient. You can select everything and do Alt A just to align the notes nicely. Now we need to make our simulation area bigger. So under the simulation note, I'll set this to 400 by 600 by 80, apply new resolution. We can turn off the skybox and go underground and set it to be just a uniform color. Next, we're gonna need an emitter. So you can drag from the simulation node and just make an emitter volume. And we need to give it some kind of a shape to emit the smoke out of. So I'll just drag out and I'll actually make a blend shape and you'll see why in a second. So for the blend shape, we need to give it a shape A and a shape B. So our shape A is gonna be just a primitive and we can set that to be a box. And then you can go into your emitter visuals and say show emitter. And for the shape B, we're gonna need a noise. So what's happening right now is the shape A is being cut by the shape B. So you get this box which is cut out with some random noise. I'm gonna set the box height to be 1.5 meters and then I just need to cover the entire simulation area. So I'll just do like 80 by 80 meters. So we need the simulation to start with the box being filled with smoke, but not rising up. So I'll just go back under my emitter, turn off the show emitter so all I see is the smoke. Then we need to go under emission and turn off fuel emission, so set it to no emission. Same thing for the temperature, set that to no emission. And for the smoke rate, I'll set it to 65. That's the exact value that I used before. So now when you reset the simulation by hitting R, you can see the smoke is just nicely sitting in place and it's not going anywhere. But one thing we're gonna do is still go under simulation force and set the buoyancy to zero to make sure that it really stays in place. And so if you wanted the gaps in the smoke to be bigger, you can just come under noise and increase the scale of the noise. And now you see what happens. It updates in real time and you have this nice broken up layer of smoke on the ground. If you're working on like a swamp, or something, right? So I'll just set it back to maybe 1.5. Now we just need to give it that shockwave force. So I'll just drag a force outside of my simulation node and set it to force line. Now by default, this force will push all of the smoke up, um, but we only need it to affect a certain area. So I'll just set the fall off to be linear. And now I'm gonna get this tube. And this tube shows me which area actually gets affected. So if I hit R again to reset, you can see that only the portion inside of the tube is getting affected by that force. So what we need is for this force to actually push downward. So I'll just set the rotation on the Y axis to be 180 and you can tell by this arrow that it's pushing down. So I'll actually set the push strength to 60, the twist strength I did 0.2 and the repel strength to eight. And you can go under shading smoke and just make the smoke a little bit brighter so it's easier to see. So I'll just make it pure white for the time being. So if I reset the simulation now, the smoke is nicely getting pushed. So under simulation force, make sure that you check solid ground. I already had it checked, but it's possible that you have it unchecked by default. So again, this just means that the smoke is colliding with the floor. If I uncheck it, you just get something like this, right? The smoke basically goes right through the floor and is killed. So all we have to do now is just animate the force to be active for only a few frames to create the shockwave. So I'll just bring up my animation timeline, hit R to reset and I'll just hit spacebar to pause the simulation. We can come into our force activity and click into this circle. And by clicking it, we're enabling keyframe animation for the force activity. So I'll just find a frame where I want it to start. So for me, it was around frame 80 and just double click to make a keyframe. So for this keyframe, it needs to be disabled, then double click to make another keyframe. And for this one, it'll be enabled. And then it needs to be disabled again a few frames later. So three keyframes total, you can move them pretty close together. We only need it to be active for a few frames. You can hold control and scroll to zoom into the timeline and you can hold shift and scroll 
to just track um, left and right. So that's shift scroll and control scroll. So I'll just move these keyframes over a little bit. Maybe it starts on frame 80 and then it ends around frame 85. So I can just hit R to reset my simulation, spacebar to start. And here we go. Here's our shock waves. Now what we want to do is loop it so it occurs over and over again. So you can either click on this toggle loop or you can just hit L on your keyboard and you'll get the loopable area highlight. So I'll just move it to maybe frame, let's say 120. And now if I reset the simulation and start it again, it's going to occur. And then as you can see, it keeps looping over and over again. And the shockwave force is being enabled in a loop. So I think I'll just extend this to frame maybe 180 to give the shockwave enough time to spread around. So now finally we can play with the color. So I'll just go back under my shading note, smoke. And for the smoke coloring, let's set it to exposed color gradient. And now you're going to get this pin here for the smoke color that you can connect something to. So I'll just drag from it and make a color gradient. I want to make this color pure white and the beginning color. I'll just make like a dark blue and then right next to it. I'll make another one and make it like a lighter blue, something like this, very saturated. And you can make another pin here and just drag the white color closer. And this way you're basically killing the gradient. So if you watch what happens, right, I'm bringing that white color closer to the blue color. Now, final thing we can do to add more detail to this is we can go under the shading node rendering and enable Raymart sharpening. So again, this might be turned off for you by default. So just enable that and you can see that brings up a lot of detail. You can play with the percentage of the sharpening. So by default, it's a 200%, which looks pretty good. And then under the scene node, you can just apply some final color correction. So you can just bring up the contrast just a touch. You can increase the saturation a little bit and that's pretty much it. So you can hit R to reset control space bar to make this full screen run the simulation. And here you go. Here's your shock wave. So if you found this video helpful, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. I would appreciate if you could leave a comment under the video. I will be uploading more Embergen tutorials, so be sure to subscribe. I appreciate you learning with me and I'll see you in the next one.